Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. And it said that it couldn't be done, but here it is. The Undisputed Combo Podcast! With the El Toro Fuerte and me, Shadowhunt Yoka. And, uh, guys, back me up. Guys? Uh, Colby? Unfound? <sighs> I'll send more birds. <laughs> you gotta stop sending people to the Mystic Mine. Unfound Prodigy is really living up to the part of the unfound in his name. And that dude, Colby. Well, that dude somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we miss you guys. If you hear this message, know that we miss you guys. Wherever you guys really are, do. whatever you're doing, know that the Shadow Hunt Joker and the El Toro Fort there are waiting for you. Anyhow, Joker, welcome back, man. Happy, happy you could make it. Uh, our second episode back since our big return. And looks like the first episode went over well. A lot of people were happy to to see us again. Got some good feedback. How about you? Actually, quite a bit of people were happy to see us. On my end, they're like, oh, are you going to cover anything next? And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I will cover some topics, but small steps. Yeah. <laughs> We we plan on doing this for a long time. It's fun. Um, I, I'll get, I'll be honest with you guys. One of the reasons that I was absent for so long was because my oldest son. Uh, I I became his football and his basketball coach for the varsity teams over at the high school. So I had two years of coaching football and basketball back to back, and then he played in another sport, which I was his ride. So I had to stay. And so by the time we got home, I was just burned out. And when I commit to something like that, I'm all in. Like I'm waking up at 12, 2, 3 in the morning thinking of strategies, all that stuff, preparing for games. So it took a lot out of me. And now that um, he's switching schools, I won't be coaching anymore. So now I'm free. I'm back. And I'm very excited. Joker, shout outs, man. Let's move over to shout outs. Who you got today? Well, first and foremost, that dude, Colby. Mm. Straight strong, brother. And Unfound Prodigy. Man, guys. I know we keep missing the timing for us to be together, but I'm still going to shout y'all out because I know we're going to get the band back together. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, definitely. You guys, um, you know, we're, don't worry. We got your spots reserved here for you. We're not replacing you with anybody. I do want to give a shout out to Skeeter the Common King. Our amigo on Instagram and on YouTube, Mr. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Common King, unlucky, super unlucky pulls. <laughs> uh, thank you again for sharing the, the news of the return. Really appreciate it. And then I want to give a shout out to Harley's Toys and Comics. Ronnie over at Harley's Toys and Comics, one of the most amazing local shops here. Does so much, has so much to offer. Lots of events. Just got done ha hosting uh, some Power Rangers. Uh, a former pink and yellow ranger just hit. Don't know what's coming next, but she's always planning some type of big event. So follow Harley's Toys and Comics if you're here in Tucson. Go pay Ronnie a visit. Del El Toro Fuerte sent you. You're not going to get a discount or anything like that. Just, you know, just say <laughs> hi. Anyhow, what uh let's let's move on to Digimon and you've got some interesting topics or a interesting topic to discuss, right? Right. It's going to be a bit of a head turner and a head scratcher, but I've been looking in the comments at certain other people's videos and reading some forums and stuff mm -hmm. and I noticed something. There was this ongoing debate, this big argument mm -hmm. about who was right and who was wrong about the pre-sales of the recent set. Now, at a certain point, I listened to both sides. Okay. On the one side, it's the people saying, you said don't buy the pre-sales, don't pre-order, don't do this, and the cards were cheaper at pre-sale than they were this day. Mm -hmm. And then, slowly but surely, cards went up in price, now they're dropping like normal. Whereas content creators were saying, we were right by on day one when they come out on opening day because they were cheap. Hmm. But here's the thing. I listened to both sides. Now, there was one thing that no one factored in. The recent Digimon pulls that came out came out during Memorial Day weekend. Of course, everybody's not getting all the product because it's a holiday. Some things don't run. 
if you were lucky, you got them and you could sell them at God knows prices. <laughs> everybody hyped it up because yeah. everybody was limited. <laughs> like this card, this alternate art was anywhere between 70 to 100 when it initially came out. And, and for those who aren't able to see, which card is that? This is Rapidmon X Antibody. Mm. Alternate Thanks. art. Yeah. Now, the more and more people were saying, hey, you were wrong on both sides. One particular content creator, I won't name names, brought up his background and why he has to be right. Oh, I get hey. that. Now, when it comes to being right, there's one thing you got to also factor in. There's other things that are variables when it comes to like different things in the market. Mm -hmm. But at a certain point, you weren't fully right. They weren't fully right. Both of y'all were right in certain aspects. Some of y'all were wrong on certain aspects. But because everybody's pushing so hard that their side is right, no one wants to sit down and be like, okay, I got it wrong here. Let me apologize for that. But I also got it right here. And everybody's forgetting the number one thing. When are we human? Like, you're not El Toro Forte all day, every day. You have who you are, right? Correct. I'm not Shadow Hunt Joker all day, every day. At a certain point, I'm myself. I'm human. So on behalf of both sides of the coin, online persona, seller, and just a regular person, I'm going to sit here and say both sides were right to a certain extent and both sides were wrong to a certain extent. And I will personally say I am responsible for some things that are said in the market. I'm not going to always get it right. There are going to be times where I say, well, this set's kind of bad, so don't buy too much out of it. Mm -hmm. And maybe the cards will go up. Then so on and so forth, or vice versa. But I cannot sit here and dictate everything. I have yeah. to look at different scenarios before I can make a decision. Now, to the people in question that will sit here and still say, well, I'm right because I was raised this way. I was taught this way. I am right 100%. Ask yourself, there was an error that you could not perceive. Does that mean that you're still right? No. If you mess up in one thing, learn from it. Own up to it. And then you'll be better. We can't predict everything. We can't even predict the weather. We can't even predict the next big game that comes out. And you think that you can predict the market? Not everybody is Nostradamus. And I say that with a pinch of salt. Come on, we know some of that stuff. <laughs> But anyways, all I'm saying is, on behalf of content creators, Digimon, Market, any of that, heck, it can even go to any other card game. We can get it wrong. Now, what we can do is instead of doubling down and people showing us later, hey, you were still wrong. You may not be right all the time. You're still wrong on this one. You can be right on this one, but yeah. not this. But I'm going to sit here and be like, I'll do better next time. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sit here and try to sugarcoat it. All I'm saying is for everybody that's sitting here and they got the proof. Yes, this set that just passed. Some of these cards, because of how short supply it was at the time. Yeah, day one buying was a bit of a hassle. You had to be lightning quick to get those deals. Mm -hmm. Then Memorial Day weekend finally kicked in. Stuff was still limited. Cards went up. But notice, two weeks after, prices are dropping. Cards are more valuable. Like, they're viable and easier to get. Yeah. All I'm saying for everybody, we don't have to fight this anymore. Both sides were right. Both sides were wrong. Own up. And let's stop losing our damn minds over this. We're human. You know, it brings up something interesting. And when I used to be a little bit more involved with the Yu-Gi-Oh community and market watches and that type of thing, it was always funny that people always wanted to be right. 
You know, they always want to be right about a specific card. If this card, this card's going to be big. Listen to what I'm saying. I know what I'm saying. I've been doing this a long time. You, you get a lot of that. And then when they're not, it's like, okay, who cares? Who, who's the guy that said it? it doesn't matter, right? We get the card. We like it. We play it. If it's a meta card, everybody's after it. I think everybody just wants to be the one that says, see, see I told you. I told you. So I was, I was right. Come to me. And they're, they're searching for that credibility when you don't really need to. I mean, you could be wrong a thousand times out of a thousand. And if if you're likable and people like your stuff, they're, they're still gonna they're still gonna follow you and listen to what you say. So uh it's it's when um I know a few other other people started taking shots at each other where it got a little out of hand. And then, you know, then one person and it, it's all trends, right? When when you're looking at the communities the Yu-Gi-Oh community, the Digimon community, one person starts something, then you have everybody that follows and does the same thing. And then that, that person that started it says, oh, everybody's doing it. Now I got to do something different. And they, they kind of follow that trend. Like I remember one of the things was uh, starting a, a, a series. That was the big thing for a while. Well, it's a new series that we're starting, and which is cool, right? And then they had the one where they would go buy out Target's that was uh, started by one of the couple of the larger influencers. And then everybody started buying out targets. And unfortunately you don't see a lot of those guys anymore. A lot of the smaller ones, uh, they just, you know, maybe they bought out too many targets and target eventually bought them out. Who knows? But oh, the 2022 incident. I remember it. Yeah. 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 We'll yeah. save that for a different topic. <laughs> that, that'll be another, another episode. We can discuss historical moments in the community. <laughs> Mm -hmm. you know we it's it's been i mean we we i mean just the last few years there's been so many things that have happened but you know i guess it's not important you know whether you're right or wrong who cares just keep doing good content people follow you people still listen to you so when you get a little bit too arrogant if you're right once or twice and then like it's like joker said you think you're nostradamus and then you know then it comes crashing down the reality hits and you were wrong exactly move on so anyhow, Joker, any uh any other Digimon topics or news, something you want to talk about? Oh yeah. The new sick comes out in the end of the month, EX6. Ooh. And from what I've been seeing with other content creators, mm -hmm. red and purple, Imperial Dramon. We're finally gonna have Imperial Dramon go back to its, as we like to call it, Venom area. Think about this. Blue green Imperial Dramon is the main like thing that's going on right now. Mm -hmm. But there was a time where red purple came out. Now, if you look online at the box that it came out in, it's $35 a box and nothing is booking over 20. It's like one of those sets that's just hmm. dead. But with the new arrival of more red purple support, I think that maybe people are going to give it a second look. Okay. I might even do it. Yeah. So, well, I'm just saying it's something to look out for. And yeah. I'm not saying it's going to be the next big meta. No, I'm saying it's worth giving a second look. Let you all decide. <laughs> So you're you're remaining somewhat neutral and not telling everybody that you're the only you, you know you listen to me I know what I'm talking about I, I like your approach I really do I appreciate it It was a set that I missed out on <laughs> when I took my hiatus so uh, I can't speak on it because I wasn't there mm -hmm. I'm definitely going to give it a second look just because I want to see what I missed out on Yeah that's good. That's good. And everybody else will have that opportunity as well. So be on the look for that new set coming out. Thank you. As always, we're going to switch gears to the topic of Yu-Gi-Oh! Guys, uh, I have a couple things. So first and foremost, we have started the project. Those of you who've been following, they've kind of known the inner circle. We, the Undisputed Combo, are going to be creating a live action movie slash Yu-Gi-Oh trailer. So it's fictitious, of course. Um, that's all I'm going to share. We did we did one a while back, a couple of years ago, it was for um, a video contest. It had to be 60 seconds or less. Uh, I had only a few weeks to do it. So we shot some scenes, did some cool stuff, and, and it's, it seemed to be well received. I had a nice collaboration with Yu-Gi-Oh! The Collector on Instagram, and we had 
quite a bit of views. I think it was over a thousand that it got. So it was more of a hit on Instagram when at like a few months after, maybe even a year after we did the collab and it was a little bit more popular then. And so now I have more time to work with. I have a bigger budget and more people. So look for that. It's on the horizon. It's already begun. I'm, I'm messing around with storyboarding and concepts and it's going to be a lot of fun. So hopefully you'll all be able to see that in the very near future. On to the actual card game. Joker, I, in the last, I don't know, few months, you know, there's been different sets and I can't name them. I'm, I'm not going to try to because I just, I stopped following it. But I see a lot of outrage over reprints and I see the outrage is coming from some of the sellers who like to sell these expensive cards, they pull them, they sell them. And the, the claim that I'm hearing from these guys is that it devalues these cards. So they're losing money. What are your thoughts on that? Have you heard that at all? Have you seen that happening? Okay. I'm going to see if I can give a quick little abridged premise of it and then go into it. Okay. Now, El Toro, let's say you got a vintage 80s Transformer Starscream. Mint condition in the box, never touched. Now, what if I told you that for, I guess, we'll say the 40th anniversary, they re released that vintage star spring, but they do mass quantities of it and make it so that it's hard to like get true value off of the old because they made it look just like that one, every si single detail. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Wouldn't private collectors be a little bit annoyed at that point? Because here it is. They have this, but now the value is going down because there's a massive reprint of something that was just hard to get. They would be a little, a little. And and hold hold that thought for one sec. I actually have something cool to show you. Okay, to be fair, Starscream is actually one of my favorite Transformers. That's why I brought up Starscream. It Oh wow! Yeah, it's G one. I now I have the original G one that I had as a kid, and all, all it's it's basically just it's missing everything. Because those of you who had G one, let me fix the camera there. Those of you who know yeah. and, and played with G one know that they had a lot of parts that came off, like Star Screams. His uh, his fists came off. Um, you might be able to see it here. So these little hands right here, the hands come off. The missiles, the missile holder, the wings, the back wings. All that stuff comes off. So the star screen that I have, the, the I have the body. <laughs> I think I have the the big wings, and maybe the small wings, and that's it. But I don't have missiles or hands anymore. Uh, I think I have the landing gear too. That also came off. But no, that's I just I thought it was hilarious that you know they they did come out with a, a remake and and um. But but to your point, yes, I think if you're one of those people who has a, a business that revolves around selling high-end cards, it's going to hurt a little bit uh, because, yeah, like you said, it does devalue them, right? It brings the, especially in, in the trading card game, toy collecting industry, it's a little bit different. It tend, they tend to go up when there's a, a duplicate made because it makes those uh -huh. original ones all that much more rare. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, but, here's the thing. Mm-hmm. As you said, mm -hmm. that was not scripted. I just like Starscream. Everybody back home knows I love Starscream. So, <laughs> Starscream wow. Awesome. Starscream is awesome. All right. Well, to be fair, there's two main arguments with this whole reprint thing. Mm -hmm. First of all, the ones that are being reprinted are like Legend of Blue Eyes, Metal Raiders, stuff that a box would be like ten thousand dollars first edition and you can make your money back just by opening a couple of packs yes to an actual collector who's been holding these boxes for 25 years seeing that this now is getting a reprint their boxes are starting to tank mm -hmm. and it's like i've held on to this for 25 years and you do this to me now people are like, it's hard to sell that off because it's like, <laughs> yeah, this is the original box. It's $10,000. Well, I'll just go to the store and spend 85 and get the same thing. Exact same thing. And and to me, see, I see it from, from a different perspective. I see it as this is phenomenal. But 
I say phenomenal for, for anyone who wants to own those cards, right? If you're a collector and you just want to collect those cards and you're not worried about owning originals, you, I mean, they're, they're all nearly identical, right? Um, I'm sure there's something that'll differentiate them. You can say, well, that's, that's an original blue eyes. Well, this is a new, the new blue eyes that was released in 23 or whatever it is. Uh, but on the other side, there's Konami again, right? saying oh we, we can't have you guys making all the money well, here we'll just reprint these so everybody can buy them because nostalgia is a big thing right now and you guys pay us and you got all the cards you want yep that part you know they're going to get their cut they see it and again i give them credit for seeing that opportunity reprinting giving the people what they want i think a lot of people have always okay. Uh, and Easy Ma has one that wanted them to bring back Unlimited, where you have first edition Unlimited, two sets, you know. And mm -hmm. I think so for the for those who actually want to collect the cards and or even just just play them goat format. Like if you wanted to play goat format, and you go back just a couple of years ago before all these got reprinted, you were paying a crap ton of money. I mean, think about Delinquent Duo and in pre goat format, right? Because I know some of these might have been banned, but Delinquent Duo. Uh, the Forceful Sentry, Confiscation, Yadagarasu. A lot of these cards were went for some some top dollar, you know. And definitely snatch deal. Yeah, yeah. And so I think it's a good thing for the game for the people who want to do it. I mean, there's people that you know that hate go format or hate playing anything prior to whenever, right? I mean, people just stick with the now, and that's great. But you do have a pretty large player base, and it's diverse enough to where they play different formats. And I think it's great. It's great for collectors. It's great for people who want to play it. Now the sellers, and that's the one where the backlash was coming from. A lot of these sellers said, "Well, this is, you know, this is not good. I don't like them doing this. It's hurting my business." And it's is what it is, guys. Konami's got more money. I'm not siding with them over you. I, I mean, I'm happy for the average guy to make money as a side hustle, or if that's your main form of income, great. Evolve. Kind of like the game, right? Evolve. Mm -hmm. Now, here's where I activate my trap card. Um, Konami did skip a couple of sets, though, because mm -hmm. there's one set that everybody's been wanting them to re-release, and they have not done it yet. A set that with one card literally hasn't gotten a reprint. Uh huh. I give you a hint. It has the only Neo Spation whose fusion has yet to be reprinted. It's Neo Spation got reprinted, but not the fusion. Hmm. Strike a Neos, anyone? Interesting. You think they'll, still, they'll make that eventually? Nope. They already oh. said nope. Ah. Yeah. Air Neos will not be reprinted. They've okay. already stated. And I'm like, y'all just went from reprinting all this other stuff and then said, eh, we're going to skip over that set real quick. I can't remember the set, but I remember, I think it was the Dark Heroes, if I'm not mistaken. And there was one particular car that just right off the bat, it was it was a rare pull and it was up in the, you know, close to hundred over hundred dollars per card. Can't remember the name. But see, that's the kind of stuff that should be reprinted. And and forgive me if I'm wrong, if they've already reprinted it, great. You know, I'm happy. But I remember there was a lot of people very disappointed because they were very excited about wanting to play a certain deck when it came out because they understand how the game works, right? You, it, uh -huh. Everything gets cycled quickly, right? Oh, this this is the, the big meta deck right here. And then in a few months, oh, that got hit on the ban list. And because here comes another set that they want to push as the new meta and or they'll bring something old back and that's you know just creates all the chaos and panic and then you're spending tons and tons of money to stay competitive i appreciate the old cards getting printed it's awesome i actually picked up a few of them for my personal collection and and to create some additional goat format decks for me and my kids but at the same time there's so many other people that play the current game and i think they deserve reprints too and if it comes at the expense of private sellers, you figure out other ways to make money. Am I wrong? Maybe. Do you agree? Disagree? Don't know? Don't care? What are your thoughts on this, Joker? I say, in a way, mm -hmm. 
it's kind of warranted that these reprints happen. I mean, it's been 25 years. There are still people that want to play old school Yu-Gi-Oh, but mm -hmm. they have to go through all that hassle of getting all that money together. And it's like, at a certain point, Sakurai doesn't have a thousand dollars. Come on now. And True. speed duels, yeah, some of those cards look good. I will admit that. Oh, yeah. But wouldn't it be nice to see the look on Kakarot's face opening his first Metal Raiders pack? Would I mean my first Metal Raiders pack had Gate Guardian? So Ooh, man. See the luck. <laughs> Even back then you had the luck. That's amazing. <laughs> exactly. So I'm like, yeah, I would kind of like to see kids go through that too. Yeah. But on the one hand, for like vendors, sellers, and high end collectors, you still have that high end box because at a certain point, you know how it goes. In a yeah. couple of years, those 25th anniversary boxes will be gone and it will start the process again. Oh, yeah. Now, on the other side of the coin, I'm going to be buying as many of these things as I can and start the process anew. Why not? If I was that person. Yeah. Why not? But I'm into Digimon now, so yeah, that saves all the boxes for everyone else. And there you go, right? There's your opportunity, guys. You can get in on this now. Probably never going to get there, and I, I say that, you know, take what I say with a grain of salt. It's likely to never get back to where you're going to sell a box of Blue Eyes for $25,000. Now, I saw some of those boxes for sale, and at one point, I had one. I had one, but I opened it. I opened every pack. And, and this isn't now. This is way back then. I think uh, Metal Raiders had just come out, and I got a hold of a Blue Eyes box. So disappointed. Wow. Uh, didn't pull really anything too good. Um, I was I was looking for that head of Exodia. I think I got a leg or a hand or arm, whatever you want to call it. Anyhow, um, it, it's exciting. And, and Kakarot is my youngest son, by the way, for those of you who don't know. That's not his real name, but that's that's what I call him. I've called him that since um, probably since he was born. One of his nicknames, one of his many. Vegeta's my oldest son, and I don't really have a nickname for my daughter anymore. So we'll Princess. To, yeah, we'll call her Princess for right now. Yep, Princess. <laughs> But anyhow, yeah, so, and and you're right, you know what I mean? Some people despise the old game. I've heard it, you know, this trash format, go format, trash, blah, blah, blah. You don't like it, that's okay. You're not going to hurt my feelings. I, I love it. I love it because that's that's my heyday. That's what I came up playing. I was competitive. I was very good. I won more than I lost. And and my um, Master Duel deck somewhat resembles a GOAT format deck. Now, there are some newer cards but not really i think the newest card i might have is uh geez i don't even know i'm trying to think about what which one moon mirror shield or uh, it's it's an equipped card i can't even think of the name of it for whatever reason but that's the mm. one nobody reads it gives you 100 more attack than your opponent's attack or defense so nobody ever reads it like they'll summon this huge monster and i'll have a 100 attack monster equipped with it and then they keep trying to attack them and they keep dying so it's uh it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Penguin I soldiers. Vicious claw. Yeah, that's awesome. I love it. I love doing stuff like that. So I play casual. And then to that point, if you want to, I mean, Master Duel is fun. It has its own challenges. But holy cow, if you want to build several decks, you're going to spend a lot of money. You can grind like everybody says, blah, blah, blah. But me and, and those of you who remember, I, I have... I go from plants to S4s to zombies to, you know, when I say plants, I mean Rikas, Arrow Mages, the uh, Sun Avalons. I mean, I have so many decks. I have Marinsis deck. I, I have all these decks still, and I may sell them at some point. Um, but, like, that's me. I have maybe uh, some form of ADHD or, or I don't know what it is where I just want to try different different decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! because it's fun, different strategies, to challenge my my skills, test myself, see how I do. I, I just think it's a lot of fun. You know, I like to master a deck, absolutely. But, yeah, at some point, it's just, just want to have fun trying different ones. Um, anyhow, that's kind of what we got for Yu-Gi-Oh! right now. We're keeping an eye on on everybody's outrage with the reprints. Now, we'll try and bring you guys different topics. If there's something you want us to discuss, something you want to address, feel free to leave a comment on YouTube or message us through Instagram. You can let us know, and we'll we'll have a little discussion, a little powwow, and prepare a little something for you. So, Joker, any final thoughts on the Yu-Gi-Oh! topic? 
Actually, there is only one. Ooh, I just right. want to know to all the people that are sitting here talking about how goat format is the bad format. Um, I can name a couple of formats where y'all were sitting here complaining like right now. This format, this is the worst format. I'd rather play goat format. I'd rather play toss format. Yeah, I've heard that numerous times, so I don't want to hear goat format is bad when y'all are sitting here constantly complaining about the sets, and then you're going, I'd rather play goat format. <laughs> it... it... <laughs> You can't win, right? You can't win. Everybody always has one thing or another. And I think when when people the goat format has um a certain it's romanticized, right? Like people think about it, they talk about it. Oh, back in the day it was so much fun, goat format, pre goat format. It's a pain in the butt. All the decks were the same. Like you think it's bad now. If you wanted to be competitive during goat format, you you they called it tech. I would tech in one or two different cards. Certain cards that nobody used, something to give you a slight edge here and there. But for the most part, GOAT format and and slightly before that, you, if you wanted to be competitive, you were all using the same cards. So you mm-hmm. knew what your opponent had, you knew what you had. Sometimes the the numbers, whether it was two or three cards, two of, three of, the ones that weren't limited on, on the list, um, it was pretty predictable. And it, a lot of times it came down to Obviously, luck played a part in your opening hand, what you drew, but skill was a major, major factor in that, your decision. Do I want to use DD Warriors Ladies um, effect? Do I want to use uh, Black Luster Soldiers removal effect? Do I want to attack twice? Certain things that you would, you would, you know, plan ahead, plan your move, whatever it is. Do I want to use Snatch Steel right away? No, don't use Snatch Steel right away. Use it to, you know, bring out Jinzo. Little, little things like that, and I'm, and I'm starting to ramble here. Um, the old brain's coming back, kicking in, but it, it's uh, a lot of people think about it and then they play it and they're like, oh, this just kind of sucks. You know, I get that. I still love it. Don't care. Anyway. It requires brain power to actually do the deck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And not saying that, that modern ones don't, because obviously, you know, it, I, if I play the modern deck, it's going to take me a while to get up to speed. And somebody who's playing a lot is probably going to smoke me pretty bad. But hand traps, right? They're everywhere. Everybody's got hand traps and gate. What do they call them? Floodgates. 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 I need the gates. Back up. Yeah. There you go. I need to get back up and up to speed. And maybe that's something I'll commit to doing is getting a little bit more up to speed with the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. I'll, I'll have to reach out to our friend Fusion YGO. Channel's doing well, my friend. Always, always lurking in the background. Same with the Super Meta Bros. I don't always comment, but I'm always watching you guys and always liking those posts, seeing what you have. Love the energy. So for those of you who don't know, follow Fusion YGO on YouTube or subscribe. And then the Super Meta Bros 2 on Instagram. Really, really awesome. And don't worry, all the other ones will give you your your time in the sun here too to get you get you some extra followers, hopefully. On to gaming, Joker. What, what'd you play this week? Well, I have to re-download Galaga because I'm hearing about that arcade place yeah i'm actually going to see about going there this saturday Ooh. well depending on when the podcast comes out it'll probably be after saturday but mm-hmm. i'm going to go check this place out because i heard everybody's been going there as of late and it just recently opened i need to go look it up i've been working so many hours so i haven't had time yeah so tomorrow i'm going to go look it up see where it is and maybe talk to my friends into going to it it sounds like it's a thing out of the 80s, or better yet, remember the movie Tron Legacy? Yes. Think that. There. And I'm like, That's huh. Cool. So I can play Galaga all I want, maybe grab like a drink, eat, then come back and play. I'll do that all day. That's, you know, when, when people talk about bringing back you know, nostalgia, stuff like that. It, it has its place, right? You got to find the right market. You can't just go any, any town, any city, any part of town and say, I'm going to open up an arcade and everybody's going to come because that's all people talk about. You got to do your homework, find the right area, find the right demographic and market it to those people and, and give them something else besides pump quarters into a machine and play old video games, you know, 30, 40 year old video games. Yeah, those are fun. <laughs> But make it make it a social setting. Like there's a place here in Tucson. Uh, I think it's called Cobra Arcade, but it's it's actually a bar slash nightclub. But they have arcade games everywhere. 
So it's kind of cool. You can come socialize, drink, get some beers, meet somebody, whatever it is, play games, whatever you want to do, you know. Uh, but I think that's pretty awesome. It's been around for quite a few years, so obviously it is successful. I've actually not been there myself, so I'm going to have to take a trip and check it out one of these days soon. I probably wouldn't play anything. I'd probably just have a couple of drinks and dance with the wife, you know. Mm. Um, anyhow, well, that's good. Galaga, you know one thing I noticed? there. There's um on the Switch... There's a some type of Nintendo Championship uh, edition uh, game that you can purchase, and I, I watched the video with Vegeta, and it was pretty interesting because it it um, it has a lot of uh, old video games like Mega Man and Mario and all that. But what it does, it has a lot of challenges. So you know, do a certain something within eleven seconds. Do you know, beat your time. And you has weekly leaderboards, people overtaking each other. So I, I don't necessarily think that it has the entire games. I think it's just full of little challenges within each game, which on the surface to me seemed kind of cool. But then the more I thought about it, I was like, you know what? That's, that's not for me. I'm more of a, I want to play the game and beat the game. So, but for anyone that's curious, check it out. It's on there. Um, the other thing that I'm excited about, I don't know if you can see that, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Everybody in my friends group is trying to get me to play Killer Clowns. And I'm just like, I want to, but only if they have a certain clown in there. And they said, yeah, they got Fluxo. I'm like, I'll I'll play it. I'll play it this weekend. <laughs> if you haven't seen the movie Killer Clowns from Outer Space, it's a 1980s cheesy B movie, cult classic in my opinion now mm -hmm. and my kids love it i love it. it it's it's hilarious but if you haven't seen it and you know you're not one of those people who oh, this is horrible oh, watch it you'll like it if you if you're into that kind of thing if you're not just totally if the, actually if you're not you're probably not listening to the podcast or watching anyway that's you probably don't fit into our demographic <laughs> <laughs> but if you like cheesy campy uh 80s movies then this is definitely one that uh, you do want to check out uh we own it now uh, one of the things I, I love here key features take on the role of the iconic 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 killer clowns cooperate in a team of three players utilize unworldly abilities hunt humans with zany weapons the, the popcorn gun probably and plan your alien invasion to harvest a population of crescent cove successfully i love it and then look at this fight back as a team of seven brave citizens of crescent club so it's seven v three this is awesome explore the city work? what's that how would that work i mean does this mean that the clowns got some really strong tech Maybe. So I'm thinking it's kind of like maybe like a, a little bit more expanded type of game, kind of like the Friday the 13th, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Dead by Daylight, whereas you have, you know, survivors, I have a certain number of survivors and, and one or I think Dead by Daylight, I think there's only one killer, I want to say. Uh, cause I, yeah. I see Vegeta play it sometimes. And I think like in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you have several, you have, you know, Leatherface, you have his brother, the father, that kind of thing. Um, awesome game. So I'm thinking maybe it's something like that, which is cool. They can find loot, weapons, avoid getting captured, try to survive the alien invasion by finding the best escape route out of town. So yeah, this is, yeah, here it is. Crescent Cove is sprawling, is a sprawling arena for unique 3v7 fights between clowns and humans, boasting various locations and a multitude of tactical opportunities for both teams. The game provides a unique approach to hide and seek gameplay, customization, PvP, PvE, and dynamic objectives leading to multiple match results. I love it. I love it. I pray that... Oh, look, look, look. There you go. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, this is so cool. I pray that I, I do not get motion sickness from this game because I am so looking forward to it. And uh, so I'll be playing that very soon. I'm getting ready to give Overwatch the old boot. Um still play here and there my friend Ronner got himself suspended mm -hmm. mr t-bag at least i'm not a rat <laughs> <laughs> you old rat that's what you get for doing whatever you did <laughs> anyhow uh yeah so overwatch is there but we're, we're getting tired of that just because it's like it's hit or miss you get these people that that are new to the game they don't know what to do and so you're trying to carry people and 
I got to the point now, man, where I just say, you know what, F it, and I'll just get a Hanzo or somebody and just practice my my terrible aim rather than trying to win with a healer or a tank. So, but uh, yeah, what, anything else on on the modern gaming you want to touch on? Anything exciting? Yeah, everybody keeps going to me and um Fallout seventy six because Ooh. I make weapons that should not be made. I like it. Yeah, I have a minigun. Well, not a minigun. A mm-hmm. fat man that shoots. 10 tiny miniature bombs and if i shoot them just enough i crash the server <laughs> i keep uh, making these and people keep buying them and i'm sitting here like y'all shouldn't be buying those they crash the game yeah and they're like i don't care so now i'm just sitting with a stockpile of these weapons and i'm going oh no <laughs> i should probably play something else Hey, do you have that one weapon that crashes the game? Yes. How much is it? 4,000 caps. Sold. Yeah, I'm surprised I haven't been, like, hit with a, please stop making these weapons. You will at some point. You will at some point. So, but that's awesome. That's good. I mean, sounds like fun, right? Crashing the server? Mm-hmm. Why not? That's that's him right there, guys. See this guy right here on camera? That's the one responsible for doing it. <laughs> Yeah, just look for Durza613 or my base is called Stark Labs, like Tony Stark. If you see that, that's where you go. Nice. Yeah. And if you guys want to play Overwatch, I'm, I'm not the best. I'm not the worst. I'm pretty decent, I'd say. Uh, the El Toro Forte on, uh, on Xbox. Look for me. All right. On to anime. Our uh, resident anime guru, again, the unfound prodigy, is currently unfound. So hopefully we will found him in the near future. Um, but I wanted to talk about an old anime. Like last week we talked about Robotech a little bit. And I wanted to talk about mm-hmm. an older one. Is is a, I first saw it, and it exists as a series and as a movie, but it's Fist of the North Star. Have you seen it, Joker? Nani? Yes, oh, I right? remember that. That's where my that's favorite character from. was Toki. Yeah, they, like he was so popular on social media. <laughs> it's from Fist of the North Star. So if you guys ever watch it, you'll be like, hey, that's where I heard that. That was in all the, the reels and whatever you want to call it these days. You know, that's what that's from. But yes, Fist of the North Star is a, um, I, I first saw it as the actual movie. It, it's phenomenal. It's a post-apocalyptic uh, type of movie with martial arts and superhuman strength and abilities and just all kinds of violence and gore and blood and it's amazing it's amazing seriously i highly recommend it you follow kenshiro in his, on his journey and you know there's some pretty epic fights and for its time i want to say was what late 80s early 90s more or less when the movie came out i could be wrong i'll have to do my my homework more i'm just talking you know shooting from the hip right now i'm not a a guru on the facts or anything like that look it up google that stuff and uh but it's it's phenomenal some of the fights they're just really cool especially the legendary final battle between king raul and kenshiro you guys will, will like it so I'm here to promote the older anime movies. Now I may talk about some newer stuff like Death Note at some point because I did like that. And even that's old. That's considered old now too. But mm-hmm. man, Fist of the North Star, definitely got to check out the movie, check out the series. Really cool. And there's actually a retro game. It's, it's pretty terrible, but I'll be playing it soon and showcasing it. So what are your thoughts on, on Fist of the North Star, Joker? Sub or dub? All right. I'll do either or, but to anyone who's still like, I don't know. I don't want to watch that show because guys and girls and everyone else in between. What if I told you that if it was not for Fists of the North Star, you would not have JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? And I can prove it. What does JoJo and everybody say when they're doing those rapid punches? Right? Yes. What does Ken do when he does those rapid punches? Yeah, <laughs> I should have exactly. Kakarot come do it. <laughs> That's where that actually came from. Yeah. yeah. Also, one other key detail: there was a time where in arcades they had those little six little spots where you had to punch, and it was Fist of the North Star, and everyone was punching as fast as they could mm-hmm. to do it. 
there are so many references to Fist of the North Star. Yeah. Heck, there's one show that bridges both Fist of the North Star and JoJo. Bo 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 bo. Fist of the nose hair. Exactly. That parody bridges in between the two. So you got Fist of the North Star. Then you got Fist of the nose hair. Star Platinum. It's worth checking out. Stay away from the live action movie Fist of the North Star. Please. I forgot that even existed. Yeah. And forget I even said it. There is no Fist of the North Star live action movie. <laughs> I'm going to lose my damn mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, phenomenal movie from start to finish. Keeps you, has great characters. And again, it's it's anime from, from back then. So take that with a grain of salt. You know, but it's it's beautiful. The hand drawn, everything, just just phenomenal. A lot of familiar voices. Tony Oliver's even in one of them. Uh, if you don't know who he is, look him up. He's in hundreds and hundreds of roles, voice roles, and just very cool. A lot of those people, uh, same people. Um, I still think I still have my VHS copy somewhere, and I think no, I need to buy the the DVD. I need to find it on Blu-ray or DVD. But yeah, Fist and Star, awesome awesome movie to see the series is is good too uh, i prefer the movie just because it kind of packs it all in together it's you know you can get out your fix in 90 minutes or however long it is i can't remember um but yeah definitely recommend checking it out and then the famous quote you are already dead yeah yeah i love it i love it exactly so anyhow well thanks again that that's our anime discussion until we get our guru on found prodigy back uh We'll, we'll bring you little little clips here and there of different anime recommendations and where you can see them. It might even be available on YouTube if I'm not mistaken. But do some searches. That that's the one thing we'll do. We'll commit to that. Get telling you where you can stream it. So right now we'll we'll uh, consider this kind of our um, intro into this, and we'll get better. We'll refine it. But I just thought of it right now. We'll, we'll in the future when we talk about an anime. And next week, I'll tell you where you can stream Robotech. I think I did, Crunchyroll. But Fist of the North Star, I'm not too sure where that's streaming right now. So, but well, I'll I find out. I think it's on Crunchyroll, and at one point, it was Tubi. Oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I could have sworn it was on Tubi. It had, like, the first two seasons. Oh, nice, nice. Well, Tubi, Tubi's where it's at, man. I, I, I put on Tubi, and I see a lot of old 80s movies that I, I forgot about. And I watch them, and they're just as... Well, I shouldn't say just as awesome, but I like them for the nostalgia. So anyhow, well, thank you for that. Today's retro game shout out. Ninja Gaiden 2. Last week we did Ninja Gaiden and saw the did the playthrough in the game. It was painful. Um uh, the videos are uploading every day at midnight or every morning, I should say, for Ninja Gaiden 2 as I play through this game. It was very painful. Um, I'm. It's a game that I haven't beaten in probably 30 plus years and I'm trying to see if I still got it on the YouTube channel. It, it's, it's fun. If you like Ninja Gaiden, you'll like part two. It's a little bit more challenging. They give you some, they give you a wall climb and they give you these little clone ninjas that follow you and mimic whatever you do. Uh, some other abilities. But again, with those new abilities comes new challenges, the enemies, the, uh, the physics of the game change a little bit, the timing, it's, it's a pain in the butt, I'm not even gonna lie. Like, man, when, especially when you get to the end, even if you have stuff memorized, like you all know you need to do in these retro games, you memorize where this enemy is going to come out from the, it, it still messes with you. It still gets you. So, uh, if you like painful nostalgia, I highly recommend going back and playing this. If you haven't played it, uh, the the games, that's the other thing I want to talk about with retro games. You see a lot of people like like myself who collect old games, right, Joker? I mean, mm -hmm. we're out there. Um, that being said, if you want to start collecting, it's very expensive right now. Now, I'm not saying anybody's poor and can't afford it, because if you can, great. I'm just saying it's expensive to start collecting retro cartridges right now for Nintendo, Super Nintendo. And then there's certain titles that are the really good ones. Some are very rare that that go for a, in the thousands, you know, little Samson, anyone you ever heard of that? Look up little Samson NES on eBay and see how much that's going for. It's insane. Just the cartridge. Anyhow, uh, there's a thing called emulators. 
the, the I can taboo. name a game that's hard to get. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Zombies ate my neighbors. Y- yes, look up zombies ate my neighbors on eBay and check the price of that. It's mm. crazy. Look up Ninja Gaiden three NES, Ninja Gaiden trilogy, Super NES. You you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, but, I'm right. Yeah, there's there's a way to do it via emulators. No, I'm not, you know, that's taboo, right? Because people are like, well, that's illegal, you know, licensing, game licensing, whatever. I'm just telling you it's it's an option. There are little mini systems out there, the Raspberry Pi, uh, and certain other ones, you know, they they jailbreak the Wii's and have thousands of, there's thousands of games. You can get the Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Genesis, Sega Genesis, even arcade games. Um, so I'm not promoting that. I'm just saying it's an option that you can look into to really enjoy these games for thousands and thousands of dollars less <laughs> of dollars less than buying them outright. If you want to own the media, the cartridges, that's great. Go for it. Best of luck to you in your hunt. But if you just want to play these old games and, and feel the pain that I feel, emulators are the way to go. Just saying. <laughs> Yeah, so that's all for the shout out, Joker. Any any uh, retro game? I know you you love Galaga. Yes, and now I'm gonna say a game that I know people are gonna look at me and be like, "I don't get it." No, I'm not gonna say Gradius. Sinestar. Ooh, wow! Beware, okay. I hunger. <laughs> right? Yeah, I, I love was... that game. I I have not thought about that game in. Man, I, I can't even remember last time I even thought about that game, but I, I actually like that game. It's on my top list of games that when I play Galaga, it's the next ones I go to. That game, I love it just because of the run, run. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Now I got, now I got to find that one. So, man, I, I, I want to play that. <laughs> oh, man. Awesome. That's almost as hard to find as Joust. Oh, God, I hate that game. I cannot find that. It's probably good. Sorry, I hate that game. I'm terrible at it. That's why I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> That's one I'm okay with not owning. Um, I did like the arcade. It was a little bit easier, but then I remember having playing it on the NES thinking I was going to have the same experience, and it was it was worse. But mm. decent decent game for, for its time, you know? Eight to eight mm-hmm. quarters at the... Uh, pizza parlor where they had one or two machines. I remember that as a kid. There was always some kid that was really good at it and everybody kind of gathered around and watched him play and, and he walked out like he was the coolest person because he had the high score. So, good old days. Good old Joust. Thanks for jogging my memory, memory on Sinistar as well. Um, any final thoughts on any of the topics that we covered, Mr. Joker? I think if anybody when it comes to the whole like marketeer thing, Mm-hmm. If anybody has any comments that they want to leave at the bottom about how sellers can get it wrong and whatnot, like I was saying, or if you feel that I touched on the topic good enough, let me know. I want to hear your side of the coin. It doesn't have to be, well, buyers are wrong because of this and sellers are wrong because of this. No, I just want to hear on your personal experience how you feel. And maybe I can give some pointers or some tips about how I go about the market. It may not always be 100% accurate, but it is a way of looking at it without feeling like you're going to spend way too much or sell at the wrong time. I'll gladly put my input and we can work together and work together on being better at this whole market thing. Very nice. Very well said. And yes, I will gladly go back to doing a market watch eventually. Hey, we'll be looking forward to that. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for that. I uh, final thoughts for me. Um, there's no reason that 30 year old video game cartridges should be 500 to a thousand dollars. Just saying, we weren't the only industry that was that was hit hard with the pandemic and jacked everything up and ruined all the PS1 and PS2 prices. So, video game industry took took a big hit with that, and now you have people who aren't. Or they just they just see it as money now rather than people who actually want to play the games or own them, collect them. So yeah, I'm just saying a 30 plus year old cartridge should not cost five hundred dollars, but it does. And I'm kind of glad that I have a few. 
<laughs> right? You can call it whatever you want, but I'm glad I own them. But at the same time, I don't think it should be that hard to get a game like that if you really want to play it. So right. my final thoughts on the video games, uh, guys, thank you all so much for listening. We really appreciate your support. Thank you for watching. If you're on YouTube, we, you know, if you're listening, you'll hear us on Spotify and hopefully a few other platforms is, is my, my goal here. Shout out to unfound prodigy and that dude Colby. We're looking forward to seeing you guys again. Joker, where can the listeners and viewers follow and interact with you? Well, you can find me on YouTube at the Unscripted Combo. You can also find me on Spotify because I'll be there as a voice. And at Silver Eyed Poet on Instagram or at your local um, arcade shop. Just playing Galaga all day. <laughs> and if you want to take a warp in a Digimon, DM him. He's happy to oblige. Amen. <laughs> awesome very awesome thank you again the undisputed combo on youtube love it love it love it a lot of different things that we're putting out there for you guys uh the el toro fuerte on instagram and robotech underscore guy if you're into robotech mac cross uh, southern cross genesis clamor Mosbieta, and just all things cool mech that has to do with with Harmony Gold and Big West. I love it all. So I'm not one of those either or guys. And we'll we'll, we'll save that discussion for another time too because that's something that I want to get off my chest at some point. But Mr. Joker, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure, my friend. Unfound Colby, hope you guys are doing well. Look forward to getting you on here soon. Thank you all so much and we'll see you next time. <laughs>